I've spent the past five, almost five years preparing myself for today. Mentally, physically, because I visit my daughter in a cemetery. And the idea that there was at least one juror who I have to imagine didn't tell the truth to get on that jury and who was never, ever, ever going to vote yes because they agreed on all the aggravating factors. The truth is the defense, for those of you who watched this trial as diligently as I did, the defense failed at mitigation. If you looked at the cross-examination, their witnesses fell apart. In the closing argument, the defense team actually referenced the neighbor, the guy who lived across the street, who spent one moment with that killer in their entire time. Okay, they, they did not prove mitigation, but yet a juror accepted the notion. A juror did not tell the truth to get on this jury, and because of that, 17 families have been failed, and it is what it is. This is the way the system works, right? I don't know. I'm not a mind reader. I can tell you this. The state did an amazing job of proving the aggravators. The state did everything they possibly could have done. I will also say the defense, um, to be a defense attorney in a situation like this, I get it, you have a job but it doesn't mean you need to lose your humanity towards the victims, which they did, okay? And they, their inability to ever, for a second, either in the courtroom or outside of the courtroom, have a human moment with us, a civil moment, was despicable. Looking at attorney Tamara Curtis take her middle finger and rub it up and down her cheek when she lost an argument in the courtroom and then to start laughing with the killer over it like an immature punk child, I will never, ever, ever forgive that moment. But that's who they were. So I will tell you, the state did its job. Whether or not doing this in another county would have made a difference, you go through a lot of people to pick a jury, I, I don't know. I don't know. The first thing I do moving forward is I go visit my daughter at the cemetery because he killed her. And that's what I have to do. The next thing I do moving forward is everything I can to prevent the next one of these from happening. The next thing I do moving forward is everything I possibly can to remind people how important the next election is and voting because we do have the ability to do things in this country to reduce gun violence through our vote, and we need to do them. So I'm going to continue doing what I do, and I'm going to go to the cemetery, and I'm going to tell my daughter what happened today, and I'm going to tell her I love her and always will. That person is planning a shooting now. That's, let's face it. And that person now believes that they can get away with it. I, um, I'm still, I, I, I true, I, and some of you know me, I'm not often stunned, but, but I am stunned by this verdict today. And I think anyone planning a shooting right now um, sees that there's a path to avoid the death penalty where it does exist. And the death penalty does exist, by the way. There was no reason they couldn't impose it. But you know what? 
His defense counsel in the closing arguments made one of the most bizarre statements I've heard in a closing argument when she said, well, if you don't give him the death penalty, he'll just end up dying in prison anyway of natural or some other causes. That was his defense counsel who said that. So right now, I'm hoping she got it right. Fred, is there any sense of small relief that you don't have to go to that courtroom anymore? You don't have to see him anymore? I would have gone to that courtroom every day the rest of my life to get the right justice. So, no. He did what he did. The only possibility for relief ended for me five years ago almost when he shot and killed my daughter. I was prepared for the rest of my life to seek justice. And I, I could not be more disappointed in what happened today. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all. What's your last name for us? G U T T? Oh, Guttenberg. Thank you. I'm sorry? No. Sorry.